there is a, uh, <clears throat> there's a simple little song, and we sing it occasionally for weekly Sabbath service. It'll be part of our opening songs, closing song, whatever. And I love that. I love that it's this simple little song that we don't care to sing. It's in our hymn book, so why not sing it? But I will tell you it's still hard to finish that song without flashing back to vacation Bible school of a kid. What I thought were, as an adult, I look back and think, man, those were simpler times. Vacation Bible school. But probably not for the adults. Because even though it was early 70s, mid 70s, whatever it happened to be, um, probably wasn't for the adults because there were there were things in the world. There were things going on, things unpleasant. And like we've talked about many times, every generation thinks they're living in the end times or the latter days. But we also talk about one of those generations is going to be correct. <laughs> they were, in fact, living in the latter days, in the end times. We have had, when I think about those simpler times, we've had at least two. They're at the back of the room, and I won't call their names, but that we've had at least two this entire week with this boundless energy. <laughs> and how many times I've been sitting out there under the, the cover out there, and these two are playing, and all of a sudden you'll see them just jump and laugh because it hit them. Nothing's funny. Nothing's really It's just hoop. <laughs> you think... Wow, <laughs> that could happen to me once in a while. And it should, it really should. And this, this Feast of Tabernacles is an expanded version of that for us adults, right? <laughs> Just takes us all week to jump and show that energy. But it does, it's good to have those children that danced up here and, and thank God for young people. It's a simple little song and you may be aware already of what and maybe I should have told you at the beginning but you know we there we end those verses with this I know this I know if only if only we knew because you sing that song congregationally that's one thing. We're all standing here as adults singing, Jesus loves me. <laughs> Vacation Bible school, right? That's kid stuff. No, that's really, really grown up stuff that kids can sing. You sing it as a congregation, that's one thing. But as grown ups, sing it when it's just you. Sing it when it's just you in a quiet place. And that's an actual request, by the way. Sometime in this next week when you're out there in the world and all you've got is a reflection of what you experienced this week, you're in a quiet place. Sing or hum that to yourself. To sing it out loud as an adult or as a grown-up and hold that last, hold that last me in the chorus for a, for a beat or two. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know, he is weak, but we are strong. All those, I mean, I, we are weak, but he is strong, sorry. But that me in the chorus, if you, if you hold that for an extra, it has a different ring. It has a different ring. Because here's something I think. You're not always honest. You're not always honest in the this I know part. I'm not always honest in the this I know. This I know. I'm not always honest. I know fire is hot. I don't have to sample that every time I see a fire, right? And my wife will tell you one of the best things I've ever done is put the fire pit in our backyard. 
And she's even had the grandkids ask her, why does, why does Papa sit out there and look at the fire? Because everything, you sit out there in the dark, you can't see anything but the fire. And you can sit there and you can gaze at those embers and those glowing coals and the flames, and it's, it's hypnotic to me. And everything in that, everything that I'm looking at is real. It's right there. Nothing, you know, but, but again, I'm, I'm digressing. I know fire is hot. I know water is wet. This I know. I don't have to wonder what happens if I walk out in the rain or I, you know, step in a puddle or, you know, look at the water hose as I squeeze it towards myself. Oh, it's wet. This I know. This I know. How do, how do we get those lessons? We grow up, right? We, we experience things and there's just certain things we know. If I jump from a high place and have a sudden stop, it hurts. I know that. I don't have to test it. There's no tests, no doubts. But with Jesus loves me, this I know, there are tests, aren't there? There are doubts sometimes. You know, I've heard several times this week from several different sources, including the Bible study. And is it, is it odd? Not odd, but is it, did it dawn on anybody but me how appropriate it was that as the Sabbath came on yesterday, we were having a Bible study? Because that's between the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles and the last great day, right? Actually, it's not between because the end of the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles starts the, be the beginning of the last great day. We were in a Bible study. And as Chris is up here, and we're seeing all those things that happen between the last great day, or the last day of the feast, and what it represents anyway, the, the millennial reign, the things that happen between the millennial reign and the last great day, it's pretty busy. So for us to be busy, as it switches from the Feast of Tabernacles to the last great day and talking about God, and talking about our walk and talking about our journey, it's very fitting. I don't know that that shouldn't become a tradition. Not that I want the Feast of Tabernacles at Statesville to become a tr tradition, but <laughs> maybe I do. Who knows? As I said the other day, it's God's plan, not ours. But I've heard several times this week from several sources, including the Bible study, this who I was thing. And for the most part, people don't like that who I was. I'm fortunate to be here. I don't know why God did this. I don't why, uh, because who I was. I want you to know, brethren, there's a few things fundamental. If you were to follow my request and sing this song sometime in this coming week, there's a few things fundamental to singing it sincerely. Get past who you were. Don't waste any more time abhorring your former self. It's, it's a waste of time. Don't do it. Don't just sing power in the blood. And now we're talking about Jesus loves me. But don't just sing power in the blood. Walk in it. Walk as if you know there is what power there is in that blood. That's going to help you stop abhorring that former self. Yes, take stock. Improve. Progress. It's work. It's work. But the loathing is not beneficial. And I'm not saying people want to, every time they say, well, the person I was, and this, it's not, they're not self-loathing. They're just stating a fact. And I could state that same fact, the person that I was. But it's not beneficial because I've said it here recently and it's been repeated. Your purchase, this is the power of the blood. Your purchase was expensive. And I want you to embrace it. I want you to really, really apply yourself to embracing that. Do justly in every situation. Do justly. Love mercy. Incoming and outgoing. Don't just love to receive mercy. Love to give mercy. Chris made a wonderful statement up here, and I don't know if he even realized it. God thrives on mercy. I mean, think about that for two seconds. And walk humbly with your God. And if you need reassurance on that, just go back to the one, one and two. Get past who you were. 
walk as if you believe in the power of the blood. Because I know, we've already heard, heard it today, and I almost wish we could have left the board up here. Because it really got some more stuff stirring around. And I'm excited. If, when we talked about it last night. But Chris's message, the Bible study, everything that's happened here this week, the fact that we've had a Feast of Tabernacles at Statesville, whatever that means, it's exciting. Because I've... And, I, and, and, and the people that come here every week know that I say this. Something is afoot. And one of those generations is going to be correct. We all know, brethren, there's a, little, there's a decent little hike. There's a decent little hike between here and the return. And we don't know what all those things look like. We don't know what's before us. We don't know what direction or how fast or how slow or how whatever we're going to have to climb, right? We know that there's a hike between here and the return. It's not for the feeble-hearted. It's not for the, or the faint-hearted or the feeble need, I guess I should say. Because if we're that generation, there's a possibility we're that generation. Now is the time to mine. You get those helmets with the lanterns. You know, there's, there's a name for them. There's lights on, the, on those lanterns. You see the pictures of the coal miners. But it's time to get those helmet lanterns and, and start digging. Because I know that it's going to take all the right stuff. Alicia was singing about enduring up here with the amazing grace. As long as I endure. Brethren, it's going to take some stuff. It's going to take some stuff. It's going to take all we got to endure. Scripture even tells us except it's possible. If it were possible for the elect to be deceived. You know what I mean? So it's going to take... It's going to take everything. It's time to mine. It's time to, and that's not just finding out. That's not just finding out about your strengths. I don't mean just dig in and find out where you're strong. That's, that's, that's part of it, what makes you tick. Because we all in this room, and I believe this, I believe we all care about one another. I do believe that we all care about one another because we, we share this walk in common. We came here this week for a common cause, for a common reason. But, <laughs> yes, there is a but. I believe we all care about one another and we share the walk in common, but you and I, or you have, you do, and you will come into contact with some that it's just that. It's just that you share common walk you're gonna that's, that's all there is but then there are some you probably have you you do and you will find those there are there are those that enhance your walk there are those we all care about each other right we all share the we all share the faith we all share the the, the desire the goal first resurrection but there are some who will enhance your walk part of your work as you leave here is to learn to recognize and identify who those people are because that's the people you need to migrate to recognize and identify we talk about locking arms right I think it was mentioned last night in the Bible study it's going to come out of time. We're going to have to lock arms, and we're going to have to. I believe we would. Don't get me wrong. I believe in a pinch, in tough times, this, this group right here would lock arms. I believe we would. But I'm going to put Chris and me on the spot for a minute because he's, you know, he's not bashful about doing that. And, and because we're who we are, not, and I'm going to tell you, when I say who we are, brethren, and I mean this with all sincerity, and Chris already kind of said it last night, because we are the ordained ministers here, but you know what a big part of that really means? Is that we're the official servants. We've, we're the official servants. It's probably not, probably not obvious to you, but we are different. Chris and me. I'm pretty sure 
I'm pretty sure there are things about me that, that Chris just tolerates. And there are things about Chris, well, we're different. <laughs> but that's okay. And I mean that sincerely. That's okay. Because I know that Chris resonates with people. Chris resonates with some that my style doesn't so much. And he's alluded to that. There's his message the other day. That's why we're all here because you might hear the same thing from three different people and there's one of those three people where it goes, yeah, I get that. Because we all communicate differently. So I won't beat that. But he does, I know that he resonates with some and that my style doesn't resonate with. But I think he knows that I love him. and his entire family. And I believe both of us, I hope both of us know that in a tight spot, we can trust one another to have our backs. So it doesn't matter that we're different. It doesn't matter that there might be things that he just tolerates about me or things that I just tolerate about him. And some people will say, well, how long can that go on? How many churches have you seen with two ministers before one of them gets... Whatever, power hungry, whatever power is associated with ministry, you'll have to share some light on that for me. But anyway, it's, it's been a blessing for me. We've got to recognize and identify the ones that enhance, and maybe it's an iron sharpens iron kind of thing, but it's okay. Brethren, we are looking for a time and a place, and we've already heard about it today, and it stirs us up. And you know what else I'm thinking is, is I'm, man, we, we're, spoiled by, we're spoiled by fast forward. I've just realized that. If you want to go back to a message and there's part of it you want to skip, and there's, we do it in movies, we do it with music, just get to the good part. Sometimes we wish there was a fast forward, right? Especially when we look at 2020, where's the fast forward button? Let's just go ahead and get there, that first resurrection. Maybe that's the... Maybe that's the inspiration for the rapture. Just skip it. All that bad stuff, we just skip it. The pre-trib rapture anyway. But we know, brethren, that today looks forward to a time and a place. As this past week has. This past week looks forward, doesn't it, to a time and place. We, we bask in the shadow of it. We want it to come. And wow, the conversations. <laughs> the conversations. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. How many conversations can we have? And I'm not, I don't mean that negatively. I'm saying, man, it's, it's, we can talk about that and talk about it. The rest of the dead did not come in Revelation 25. And I cheated a little bit because it's already in my notes. So when Chris was on the word, I said Revelation 25. It made me look really smart, but it's just because my... <laughs> My memory was good enough to remember that I had it here in my notes. Could be many a fireside chat. You know, at, at the school, they still got the sign up. Remember the three W's. Wait six feet, wear your mask, wash your hands. You know, when I say there could be many a fireside chat about that verse, the rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were ended, or even the first resurrection. We can do the, the five W's. Who, what, why, when, and where. Talk about the resurrections all day, it seems like. Because that's our, that's our goal. That's that time and place. What we do typically agree on is that there is at least two. There's more than one because the first is the preferred. The first isn't going to be the preferred if there's not something else, right? So that's where we always agree. There's more than one, because the first is preferred. When we do think about the time and place that this day represents, brethren, we tend to think of loved ones gone before us. Loved ones gone before us. Well, today, I think about some of the loved ones that I may be gone before. 
I'm a grandfather. And I have kids too, else I wouldn't be, <laughs> wouldn't be a grandfather, so I don't mean to, to skip it. That's the fast forward part. But maybe it's some that I've gone before. Those grandbabies call me Papa. And that's a, good, that's a good thing about being the grandparent. You get to choose. You don't get to choose who your grandkids are, but you get to choose what they call you because you keep repeating it to them, and you can't wait till the first time they say it. Pop. And I chose Papa because the only grandfather that I got a chance to know for a brief time, and he died when I was seven, he was Papa. And, <clears throat> sorry, that's a term of endearment. And I don't necessarily think about Papa when, when I think about the last great day with the white throne judgment. Because Papa was a good man. But when I read the scripture and it says, and he said, Abba, all things are possible unto you. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, what I will, but what you will. That's in verse 36. I think it's in John chapter 14. I don't think I wrote that down. but You know, and in some cultures, Papa is common for father. And we talked about it last night. Scripturally, fathers are the, is a lineage of dads, right? The word, if the word was with God and the word was God, I could sing that song with that word inserted, couldn't I? Papa loves me. This I know. I want my grandkids to be able to sing that about me because if nothing else, I want them always to know that ours is a place of love. Not that we're not going to correct them and do what we need to do, but yeah, to think about that song that way, Papa loves me. Not my grandfather. Abba. Father. I want you to know this. That fifth verse of Revelation 20, as we've already seen today, will be live. It's, it's always, it's been, the, it's been the bottom half of that hourglass that you saw up here the other day. That time, that place, it's been at the bottom of that hourglass, but it's going to be live. That last grain of sand is going to slide through, and there we're going to be. can't imagine can't imagine. I don't know how it is for you, but on, on the computer, when you, and my wife and I are often showing each other, you open up your computer, and there's a different scene. And we talk about travel. We would love to travel. But you see pictures of these places, and they stir me, and I think, man, what a beautiful, and it's not always a beach, or it's not always some travel, just places and things you'd like to see. I say it stirs me, and it, it, it sings to me a little bit. And I get a little sad that, you know, well, the funds don't cooperate, you know, or time seems to be running out. There's just, i, I got to face it, there's going to be places on this planet I'm not going to get to see. All these places I'd like to go. I'm getting a little long in the tooth, as Ron Dart used to say. Mid-50s, be a senior citizen before long. Maybe I can get some discounts. But... Man, time's running out. I don't, you know, the money's not there. The time's running out. But you know what? I say then, wait. Wait a minute. Time hasn't even begun yet. God's kingdom is coming to this planet. If we can make it to be resurrected spirit beings, where can't we go? This planet or others? Funds won't matter then. I want you to think about this too. 
as flesh and blood, as flesh and blood and bone, there's only so many ways to be blessed, right? Good health, prosperity. I know we don't preach prosperity religion, but there's only so many ways as a human being that you can be blessed. Good health, prosperity, good family, nice career. I mean, how many ways can you be blessed as flesh and blood? But when you are raised and incorruptible, so many infinite ways for God to show his stuff. Because there's blessings he can't give you as a flesh and blood human being. You can't, you can't take it. You can't handle it. You know, we'd like to see God's face, but we can't and live. So maybe we wouldn't like to see God's face. But when you're, there's just, uh, and with that thought, when you think, man, if, if I could make it and be that resurrected spirit being, then it opens up a whole new showcase of ways that God can bless us. Because Kyle, when we talked about it yesterday, when Kyle was up here yesterday, and because and, and, I told my wife, I said, I remember from years and years ago, the little church over in Troutman, older guy, gave a sermonette, and it wasn't about that necessarily, but he made the point, and I've said this here before probably, that he made the point that all the water that was on the planet from the beginning is still here because you went through the whole thing of how it gets recycled and where does water go? I mean, it just, it keeps, you know. And I never forgot that. But then Kyle made the point yesterday, everything that was here is still here. It's in a different form. But you think, and I told Kyle this sometime yesterday about, you know, thinking that God, maybe I didn't say it to Kyle, sorry if I misspoke there, but I said it to somebody, <laughs> that the fact that God only had to do it once, like you said, this worked, don't have to reinvent it every time, this worked, bones, bones in the neck, don't have to reinvent it, God created science, he put it in motion, as Kyle said, he doesn't have to crank the gears, a lot of it just works. Most of it, all of it works, right? God just did it, put it in action. If you get outside that, you want to defy science? You want to go out here and jump off the building? Think you can fly? Then you pay the penalty. God doesn't have to say, oh, I'm going to make this hurt. He already put all that stuff in motion, right? <laughs> do you think, do you think God knows you well enough to customize your reward, tailored just to you. Because sometimes, brethren, I think we think about God's kingdom and our reward too generically, that it's going to be the same for everybody. There's things that make Tom Covington tick, and I believe that God knows what those things are. Your reward may not be exactly like mine. He knows, and that goes for all of you. Why do we think God can't customize the reward? And tailor it just for you. He put all that stuff out there. We think the universe is endless. For all we know it is, we haven't found the end of it yet, have we? Nobody's ran into the end of the universe and said, well, there it is. Okay, just like Kyle was talking about yesterday, he didn't do all that with no purpose. Did he, did he create all that space for nothing? I don't think so. So as spirit beings, I don't think there's any limit to how God can bless us. No wonder he says it hasn't entered into your heart or mind, ear hasn't heard. Maybe that doesn't apply to us, but I think if you take it full spectrum, it probably does. If things go too well here, and the reason I say we can't take it, brethren, because if things go too well here, you know, it can corrupt can corrupt us we could be over blessed <laughs> I'm not saying it's it's a surety but it can it can corrupt as changed risen beings we're better equipped we will be much better equipped to handle the blessings that God blessings that are too big for you now 
I can't say the old wine skins, you know, where the scripture talks about it. Maybe you know where it is. You don't put a, a new piece of cloth on a shrunken garment. You don't put new wine into old wine skins because it'll burst and then the wine's wasted. Well, he can't pour all of his new wine into these old wine skins, can he? But he's got some new wine ready because he said, I will not drink again until I drink it new with you in the kingdom. You're going to be a new wine skin. You're going to be raised an incorruptible, and I'm going to pour some wine in there like you've never had. Right? I mean, I don't know that it applies, but it's in Matthew 9, Mark 2, Luke 5, if you want to research it. When, uh, when this time and place is at hand, when we've been through that thousand years, and then we really get to see. And I think probably during that thousand years, we're going to learn what we can anticipate is going to happen. We already know that our adversary is going to be loosed. We've got to be prepared, not, not because we're vulnerable, but because other people will be. And hopefully during that thousand years, yeah, we've learned and, and know what to anticipate. And I believe that is going to be absolutely the case. But when this time and place is at hand, how much clearer is it going to be to you? When I say we can sing that song now and say, Jesus loves me, this I know. We're not always honest with ourselves with the this I know part. But when that time we've been talking about and hearing about here is real, if, when it's live action, how much clearer is it going to be? This I know. No longer looking down the path. We're there. It's real. It's hard, isn't it, to get our, yeah, get our minds to absorb that. How much more real will it be? This is not a competition. I can, it's not a competition. It doesn't matter. My grandparents, my great-grandparents, great-uncles, great-aunts, you know, whatever. They may come up with me. Maybe they come up before me. It's like Chris said, second resurrection is good stuff, and I'm not lowering my aim. But there's always a chance that I could, you know, mess up. Because <laughs> we know there's things that has to happen for us to achieve that first resurrection. So it's not a competition with my grandparents, my, my great-grandparents, anybody. We just finished. Feast of Tabernacles, shadow of things to come. We want to be in that first rising. We want the millennium because no matter how we slice it up, and Chris has already, I don't even need to, to say it, he's already expounded on it. That's the big thing. That's the big difference between the first and second resurrection is missing that thousand years with our king. Now, if he can teach us stuff in black and white and with the Holy Spirit, what's he going to teach us in person? Oh, the hugs. You know, that's what I said about the Feast of Tabernacles this year. And you guys proving me a fool. I don't know that's not a great word to use from the pulpit. But had I known, I've got new friends. And I hope it lasts until the return. And I met a, a, a good little friend that I wouldn't have known, not this week. And I'm enriched by that. And I'm... <coughs> I'm blessed, but we just finished it. We want that millennium, brethren. We want it. And just think, just, just think of the experience you'll be packing if you're there when those graves open. If you're in the first resurrection, you've spent a thousand years with the teacher. What kind, what? You're going to be armed. And I don't mean with weapons. Well, you could call them weapons. You're going to be ready. 
And brethren, those people are going to need you when those graves open. Just like I said the other day, this is a classroom. Not just this Feast of Tabernacles at Statesville. Our journey and our interaction with one another and our interaction with the world and other believers is the classroom. Think of that experience. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. If I if I were next to you if I were next to you in that time and place brethren might I hear you humming or singing a simple little song might we together feel on our backs or on our shoulders the the mightiest hand ever and a voice that says I love you we can say yes papa this I know